Today on Legends of Muskegon Radio, we're interviewing Randy Crow, whose radio and media career extends over 40 plus years. He was a radio DJ on three of Muskegon's most popular radio stations, WTRU, WMUS, and WLCS. He would soon move to full-time radio advertising sales, station management, and part ownership. In 1988, he helped to launch WLCS, Muskegon's first classic rock, a head-to-head -head competitor to WMUS, his recent former employer. This would lead eventually to his founding ownership and where he now serves as CEO of RC Productions Inc., which includes RCP Marketing Ad Agency, Source One Digital, a top digital printer in the United States, and the Gear Group Promotional Products and Apparel Company. In November of 2019, he purchased the Trophy House, Jones Sporting Goods, Lindback Distributing, and Havana Bobs. Today, the Gear Group has combined forces with Trophy House brands to bring a 50-plus year foundation of promotional products, corporate apparel, and sporting goods, all displayed in a 10,000 square foot showroom and a 56,000 square foot production facility now serving not only West Michigan, but all of the United States. Randy, tell me uh, how and when did you start your radio slash media career? Well, it, uh, I, I would tell you it started by accident. By accident? And, yes. My, uh, I grew up um, from the age of about seven years old pouring concrete. My father owned a concrete business. Mm -hmm. And so our weekends and after school was go to work and finish concrete and do that kind of work. Well, in 1973, when I was 13, he come down with lung cancer. They removed a lung, he went back to work. And in 75, cancer come back again. And then in 1977, cancer won the battle and suddenly he was gone, which meant our small company, family-owned business was gone, the income was gone, no life insurance. Uh, he served in World War II, but you found out that none of those benefits would come your way back in those days. So it was time to go to work and survive, and I was still in high school. And uh, one, one journey with my father was 30-some days in the hospital. So I had some very good teachers at Mona Shores High School that let me do a lot of work remotely. A couple of them took me under their wing, and... Uh, Mr. Thompson that, uh, and Mr. Nye that headed up the DECA Business Club and the Radio Club uh, felt I had a deep voice and asked me if I would like to you know, become part of the DECA program and the Radio Club program. And before I knew it, I didn't realize nobody else wanted to do the morning announcements. I was drafted to do the morning uh, announcements at school. And from there, we built a radio station uh, within the school. Uh, some other, you know, great radio legends in Muskegon had come out of WMSR radio, Mona Shores radio. Uh, Michael Siriani, which was AKA Mike Stevens on WTRU, WGRD. Uh, so I made my way through that. And the way my life worked back then is I went to school from uh, seven in the morning till noon. I was on a work co-op program through my DECA program, so I worked at, had various jobs, but the, the one that had meaning to getting me into radio was Vets Clothing. Um, I'd, and while working at Vets Clothing, Larry Golumbek, uh, who was my boss uh, and owner, uh, took me under his wing and said, I should introduce you to Fred Tascone. So one day when I come in, there was a business card that says, Call Fred. and uh, I called Fred, I think their phone number was 733-2126, and I went over and met with Fred and the program director, John London, I think I was 16 at the time, just turning 16, and they offered me a weekend gig. I can remember sitting in this office on these leather couches, and uh, they said I'd have to get an FCC license. I had no idea what an FCC license was. And so I said, okay, I can do that. 
and um, they took me in the studio, had me read some lines, and I started uh, the next weekend doing, uh, you know, the, the weekend gig. From there, they moved me to uh, seven to midnight. So now I went to school from seven till noon. Worked at the clothing store from noon to five. Showed up at True uh, by six o'clock to run the hotline program featuring Dave Parks. And um, I'd be on the radio that we signed off at midnight. And by the time I got home, it was about one one o'clock in the morning because you had to do all your meter readings and all your stuff. And I did that from. Um, I guess I was in 10th grade, I did it through 11th grade, and I was still at uh, True uh, doing afternoons. I'd been moved to the afternoon gig, and my clothing uh, store job worked around me. And on top of that, I poured concrete on the weekends for extra money. I was trying to help support my, my mother, who was a stay-at-home mom, and suddenly we've got bills to pay. So, my radio journey uh, didn't see it coming, but uh, I've had a lot of fun with it and still enjoy it. And, you know, here we are. You used the name Randy Collins. Yeah, there was a conversation the fact that uh, obviously Larry uh, from Vets had shared with Fred that my father would, was gone and I was still living at home with my mother. They said, You're going to have to come up with the radio name. And I said, why a radio name? And John Lennon said, well, my name is Newton Fiat Jr. Oh, okay. So they said, if you were to pick a radio name, what would you pick? Well, my mother's maiden name was Collins. And I figured no one in the community, they said, you know, that way nobody knows who you are. Nobody can, you know, and most disc jockeys. Bill, uh, Bill Andrews, it's on the air here middays. His real name's Spaniola. Mike Stevens, it's on in the afternoon, is Michael Siriani. And I said, but I've met Bill Ecker before, and he is Bill Ecker, right? And they said, yes, he's Bill Ecker. <laughs> okay, so I changed my name. So then uh, uh, John London, the program director, said, I think we should have a little fun with this. You're going to be the youngest jock that we've had on the air here. And we want to put you out in the community and you know, they had that super Trudy mobile home thing with the big lips on the front of it. And they would take it to various events. And, you know, I was the young, hip guy. So I got a lot of my pictures, you'll see I'm in Trudy. And so they changed my name from Colin C-O-L-L-I-N-S to K-O-L-E-N-Z. Just to give it a unique look. Okay. And kind of a branding thing. So my mother never quite understood that, but... <laughs> Hey, it was a job, and if that's what the bosses were telling me to do, that's what I'm going to do. Could you walk us through your radio media career timeline? We've, you told us about how you got the job at True. Where does it go from there? Well, I was on the air, like I said, started weekends, work any shift, and then uh, once... Uh, you know, I was still in the DECA program at school and I'd won numerous speaking awards. I was always better at speaking than I was writing. Um, and so, as I continued to do that, and, you know, a lot of the tenure guys at True didn't like to go out after they worked. They didn't want to do the, the events all over town. And I'd do them. Nobody paid you back then to do them. You just did them. But, so I did True right through uh, I was doing afternoons in 79, and you could see all these salespeople coming and going. They had what was called the dungeon there. It really was cool. It had a bar in it, and uh, they'd bring these clients, and they'd all chuckle and laugh and hang out. And I thought, that's a pretty cool deal, you know, drinking in the middle of the afternoon, and, you know, thought that was pretty interesting. Plus, you can sure figure out real fast that, you know, what I was being paid, I made more money at 10 years old shoveling concrete, and sand than I did, you know, spending 45s. And what year was this? Uh, 1979. <laughs> so one of, the, one of the people in the office one day, uh, after my shift ended, um, I heard this, this lady, and I'll leave her name out of it, losing a rep at MUS. 
this uh, lady named Gloria Russell was having some health issues and she was going to leave her job. So I got in my uh, car and I drove to North Muskegon and I pulled in on Giles Road, never been there, drove by there a few times, and a uh, little red building, you know, just sitting in the woods, and there was, uh, I knew who Tim Akteroff was, and he's standing at the front door trying to figure out how to take the screen out of the front door. Uh, this would have been September, going into October, and and all of us that know Tim know that, you know, uh, the easiest way to get anything done is with a screwdriver or a hammer for Tim. And I said, uh, you want some help with that? He said, who are you? I said, I'm Randy Crow. He goes, I know that voice. I said, I'm Randy Collins from WTRU. Oh, I listen to you. He says, and he shakes my hand. So the next thing you know, I'm taking the screen out and hand him the screen and he says, uh, what are you doing? I said, I hear you're looking for a sales rep. He said, who'd you hear that from? I said, a little bird over at uh, True. I said, uh, I'd like to, I, I would like to get that job. So we went into his office and, you know, it was really strange back then. Everybody had these leather couches and you sat down in the couch and they sat up here and they leaned forward and kind of felt like, holy smokes. And so he asked me if I had any sales experience, and I said, no, I sell clothing. I worked at a jewelry store for a little while, and, you know, uh, I'm top salesman at the clothing store. And he said, well, you know, selling radio is a little tougher than selling suits. And I said, well, probably is. And he says, well, it's hard work, it's long hours. I said, I'm used to hard work and long hours. And... He said, well, I've got another person I'm really thinking about hiring. And I said, I really want this job. And I said, you won't be sorry. And he said, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send you home with Jason Jennings sales training tapes. He said, and here's how it works. You're going to get paid $75 a week and 15% of what you sell. And I can remember thinking to myself, $75 a week is a lot less than I've ever made. Ever. And I really didn't do the math on the 15% until I got home, and it was the fall, my mom's up cleaning leaves up. I come in with this box of tapes, cassette tapes. She said, how'd it go? And I said, well, I think it went pretty good. But he wants me to listen to these tapes. So that night, I'm sitting listening to all these training tapes. And I'm thinking, $75, that's not going to cover too many bills here. And I started saying, well, if I sold $100, I'd make $15. If I sold $1,000, I'd make $150. Well, you start doing the math. So I went back, and he said, uh, what do you think? I said, I'm ready to go. So I uh, gave my notice at True while I also started MUS. I can remember the first day walking in, and there you was. You got stuck with me. We all sat in the lobby behind this little folding wall. And from there I uh, started selling, still doing commercials, uh, voiceover on some commercials. And then I think uh, it was 81, somewhere around in there when the tower was being increased, we we're going to go after Grand Rapids. Um, I think uh, you had a lot to do with with the reason I've got the sales manager job um, and so I was offered that sales manager job and you know I don't think I was that old when I got that job. Well that was in 85. Yeah. So well, I, was, I was going to Duluth. Yeah. So. Okay so I was I had been there a while then. Yeah. Um, so I sold for a while and basically you know Tim being Tim he would cut the newspaper up every morning and I was given Nuego I was given accounts that never wanted to spend any money, and um, I remember one of my first calls turned out to be one of my lifelong clients, uh, still a dear friend of mine, Roger Eikenberry from Plums. Nobody could get Chuck Carlson or Plums on the radio, and I walked in the dungeon there. They were in a basement, and I asked to see Chuck Carlton. He said, he, the girl told me I didn't have an appointment. I said, no problem, I'll wait. And 
two hours later I'm still sitting there and he come out and he said I don't know what you want but I'm not buying I said well I really think you should listen to what I have to say because you know I noticed when I walked in there's a lot of shopping carts not being used and my job is to bring more people in here to the point you have to buy more shopping carts and he said if radio was any good it would be so cheap I said well if you want me to charge you more I'll be happy to charge you more I think at that time our rates were a couple bucks a spot and you know 460 I think it was yeah I was gonna say right around yeah. there yep. you get into the packages they were cheaper but so he pawned me off on a guy named Roger Eikenberry and Roger eventually bought plums and before I knew I had plums on the air I had all these businesses in Nuego and, you know, had people that nobody had ever been able to get on the radio on the radio. So from there, the journey continued and I started selling and having fun and uh, still getting to play radio from time to time. Because I, I, that's what I did. I recorded my own commercials for potential clients, Cook's Appliance, uh, Speedy Loop, you name the client, I'd write a script on my Underwood 5 typewriter <laughs> and I would then record it on my work tape that's here, which can't get my reel to reel to work this morning, and I'd go out and that's how I sold. Because they'd always tell you what they liked about the commercial and what they didn't like. So I would say, well, I'll make these changes to the commercial and here's a program that would run Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, it's an early bird or you know, the super shopper that runs Wednesday through Saturday. I never ask them if they wanted to buy. I just basically, you know, use the concept of assumption. Assumption. Yeah. And that worked very well for me. And, you know, I'm proud to say today, uh, you know, one of my dear friends in Florida is Greg Cook that owned all the Cook stores, Roger Eikenberry. Uh, you know, clients that started with me all those years ago are still there. Um, so from there I took over the sales manager position. Um, so I'd have been 24 going on 25 and my job was to hire people for Grand Rapids. We put an office in Grand Rapids. Um, we hired some pretty dynamic salespeople, and uh, the critics said we would never be able to take on Grand Rapids and the CUZ giants and mm -hmm. all of those. Mm -hmm. um, I think the first year we were just shy of a million dollars. Do you remember what we took out of there the first year? I thought it was close to a million dollars. I think it was, yeah. And based on the incentives that uh, Tim and Bunker had uh, put in place. And Bunker. Bunker Rogoski, one of the owners. Um, and longtime president. Longtime president. Of the company. Company. So uh, sales were going great. Um, they would put me on incentives, so we kept hiring really awesome salespeople, and uh, we all had fun. I mean, we'd pile in a car at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and head to Chicago and watch a White Sox game and drive back that night after having a lot of fun. Probably wouldn't do that today. Um, and we'd be back to work at 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning, and that's just the way that the game played. Um, and through my job with MUS, I still got to be a disc jockey. Mm -hmm. You know, I could mm -hmm. still do remotes. Did a lot of events at the arena with you. Right. Mm -hmm. Best part of that is we got free tickets and drinks and yep. food. We so, go down on the ice. Yeah, we go down on the ice. With our microphones. With our microphones. And so later on, I think it was uh, approaching 1988, um, you know, some things with with uh, the ownership of the MUS had changed where some of the goals, you know, they felt I was making too much money. And so they laid out a plan for going into 89 and the plan was just not realistic. And my whole career, my goal was to never go backwards. So I made the decision to leave and there was a radio station struggling in town. It was called WABX. We changed the call letters to uh, WLCS and we love Crow Station. <laughs> I've and, never heard that before. Yep, that's what it was. And there was a classic rock out of uh, Detroit.
that uh, I called up and got to know the program director. I thought it was an outstanding station. I think it was, uh, was it CSX in Detroit. Tim would correct me. He probably will correct me. Um, <laughs> Tim Actor. So yeah, so we launched uh, 98.3 WLCS. It was the coolest launch ever. You know, I had all my uh, clients uh, that had been with me. Uh, we turned billboards upside down. We put pieces of billboards up. We had uh, a major trip giveaway. It was the largest trip giveaway that ever happened in this market. And the music was rock and roll. Uh, Bill Spaniola come on as my program director, who was Bill Andrews at WTRU. Pulled him out of uh, the career he was in at the time. And I started doing mornings there and selling. And, you know, we didn't have a lot of money. And we basically turned a non-revenue station into a revenue-generating machine. Mm -hmm. The music was good. Um, I had such a great relationship with MUS on my departure, I was actually working for both companies at one time. I wanted to make sure the transition of my clients was flawless at MUS, mm -hmm. and never did I, going to LCS, ever encourage a client to quit advertising on MUS there was just another new alternative in the market that helped you reach more. And the ratings were strong, revenue was strong. Um, I drove by 752 Pine Street and had a for rent sign on it. And it said, uh, see Dave Bolins next door, his and her uniforms. By noon I had rented that office space and Jim Seastrom from Great Lake Signs, I stopped there next who always put my MUS logos on my Camaros, um, had an RC logo, because RC Productions really started in 1981. It was a voice production company doing commercials for mm. various clients. I was doing a lot of work with Hackley Hospital, mm. narrating a lot of internal Hackley okay. stuff. Car dealers in Kansas City, different, different things along that line. Mm. So it's not like RC was new. But it was going to be newer. It was going to become a reality. Mm -hmm. It was going to have to be the survival line at that point. Mm -hmm. So once we got all of our LCS stuff settled out, so here we are at RC uh, Productions, and I hired, uh, it's in the back, I, I uh, uh, had a 1967 Chevelle Super Sport that I bought with one of my bonus checks from MUS. Still have that car today. I went to Old Kent Bank and put that car up for collateral and bought the first Mac computer and we were going to get into doing digital graphics mm -hmm. and no one said it could be done. Well I had uh, been in negotiations and I purchased it sitting next to you the coupon clipper from a franchise in Grand Rapids and it was all in color and this was about the time that the USA Today uh, newspaper went all color. So the goal was that was all going to be done digitally. There I am on the front and Tim was my co-sponsoring and the theme behind that you'd sell ads in that and you'd run all the commercials on radio and TV but through my partnership with Plums you could win that's 2600 in groceries. The first issue was 5200 100 a week for 52 weeks. Then you'd win cruises, you'd win you know, I think that one's got Wesco gas for uh, uh, get five thousand dollar cash and gas giveaway. This would have been one when I was leaving LCS. So this was uh, something I was selling on top of everything else. So it, it it got us into graphics. So from there, I hired my first graphic designer, Julie Franzik, who was still mm -hmm. with RCP Marketing today. This is 20, 28 years, 20, a long time, um, 1991. And uh, we built our staff in, I think it was 700 square feet of space on Pine Street. And I still drive by that um, space and uh, think about how good it was to growth, you know, because now when I told somebody something that it could be the truth. Mm -hmm. And uh, so here we are, um, 
you know, RC, I think this year will be the 38th year of RC because uh, that was born in 1981 mm -hmm. as a voice production company. Uh, in fact, my birthday cakes at the MUS 4th of July parties, you guys always put the crow talking into the microphone <laughs> on my cakes. And <laughs> it was the birth, my birthday fell right at 4th of July weekend. We had some good parties there, didn't we? Yeah, we did. And so in 1993, um, or in 92 we moved to this building and what you see was an old condemned building and a friend of mine, Bob Yost, God rest his soul, helped me. We'd take our suits off at 3 o'clock and we'd work till 1 in the morning. We did it for 91 days and we made this facility from a condemned building. I remember Tim Akteroff used to stop here and just thought I was out of my mind. How are you ever going to fix this place? The floors are a mess, the walls are a mess. And so he, as it took progression, he was always impressed that I knew how to do that kind of stuff. And, uh, so I decided that um, I was tired of using MUS as studio uh, to do my commercials. And I had this dream of wanting to have one of the first digital studios in West Michigan. So I called Audio Broadcast Group, which is the company that built the studio that we're sitting in. And I swore them to secrecy that I didn't want anybody in the market to know what I was thinking about. So Mark Stevens, who had worked at, uh, was working at MUS, had worked for major Nashville studios, worked for a major agency uh, in Grand Rapids that uh, Mark had the honor and privilege to work on the Like a Rock with Bob Seeger commercial for Chevrolet. And I had a lot of respect for Mark. So we met for a beer, and next thing you know, Mark said, Hey, I would I'd love to partner up with you and, and come on this train. So he sketched this studio. I have it upstairs on a napkin. And Audio Broadcast Group built it. It was built in 1993. Um, it was a lot of money at that time. It was pushing over $140,000 and we had the first rolling digital uh, deck. We got the last Rams aboard that come over on the Mayflower. Um, we had multiple reel-to-reels and our goal was to eventually launch it into television because we were doing a lot of television. I used a company in Grand Rapids. So later on we got right into the TV uh, stuff. And sadly in 2010 you know, I walked in this studio and Mark was coughing one morning. I said, that's a nasty cough. And he goes, I just can't get rid of it. And nine days later, I kissed his forehead goodbye at the University of Michigan. Hmm. Um, and that was probably the hardest, the hardest thing that I ever went through here. Hmm. I've been through a lot. I've had to tell my friends that work hand in hand with me that they're Someone's passed away in their family, um, but losing Mark was a mm -hmm. a real challenge. And we went through a couple cycles of people. And the team I have in here right now, I know he's up there in heaven this morning, smiling because uh, Ryan and Marcus are just hitting the skin right off the ball in here. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got this drone uh, certified drone flyers. So we've got all this 4K and you know, all of this really cool stuff, and they really dig the uh, analog, you know, the, the Mr. Tim Akterhoff synthesizer. If he was here, he'd want to fly a jet through the room. Um, <laughs> and, you know, a real dedicated sound studio. Today, you know, RC grew um, with clients, dedicated clients, and Muskegon really did not have an ad agency that wanted to deal with retail sector clients, car dealers, grocery stores, hospitals. Most of the agencies that were in the market at the time all liked that B2B business. It was more profitable. It was easier, you know, and um, I loved helping brainstorm creative ideas and strategies. And so here we are all these years later and proud to say we still have clients that started with us on day one. So sitting here today, I would have never, I never would have thought sitting across from you in 1980 that we would have 100 and, 
eight employees. The people you've worked with, not only in radio, but in, in your various media companies, uh, people that stood out in your career, um, talk about them a little bit, if you would. Well, obviously, and I, I uh, still see Larry and Renee Golumbeck, and without Re Renee and Larry Golumbeck, he co-signed on my first credit card. I couldn't afford my graduation pictures. Um, so he had a library in his house, which was really cool. And uh, my uh, girlfriend's sister at the time took my graduation pictures in his house. Uh, my teachers from Mona Shores bought my graduation cake at a party for me. So without those people at Mona Shores, you know, losing my dad was the worst experience because I really thought he'd live forever and so did he. So, you know, I wouldn't be here today without those people taking that chance. Mm -hmm. And then you walk into a guy like Fred Tascone that I still talk with Fred from time to time and he still laughs about me. You know, he got mad at me one time. We gave away a 1957 uh, Chevy on the air one night. It was my birthday. I'm not going to tell you how old because I probably shouldn't have been drinking. Um, but the station powered down at night. So we figured nobody was going to hear us anyway. You could only get it a few miles around the circle of the studio at Summit and Getty. Mm -hmm. Bill Spaniolo's in there, Mike Sirianni, Bill Ecker, her, was, we're just having a good old time. Phone ringing, people wanting to play, say happy birthday, so you play a tape back. And we got on this, and Bill Andrews, Spaniolo started, ah, let's give away, so the next thing you know, we give away a 1957 Chevy. <laughs> that was all fun and games until the next day when somebody calls and wants to know how they get the car. So needless to say, Fred didn't think that was too funny, uh, but it was at the time. Thank God the, uh, the listener was such a diehard true fan. That's one thing I will respect forever. All of, the, all of the listeners that still today will say, I used to listen to you. Used to li you get that. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. used to listen to you. Yep. Loyal, loyal fans. Muskegon, what a great place because people are just so kind. Um, so then you get to the radio station and without Fred and John London, you know, and I was a kid and I'm in a Mona Shores radio club and I'm working with some of the, you know, Stan Wallace, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. big time morning guy. And the Bill Ecker, Dave Park, Hotline, who's never heard of Hotline if you're mm -hmm. our age. Mm -hmm. um, and they all took me under their wing and they all taught me things. and. Um, and then when I moved to MUS, you know, uh, you're one of the first faces I met. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't ditch me off as some young kid. If we had a dime for every conversation we had at Mr. Quick's in North Muskegon, <laughs> and the wisdom you'd give me, and you know, how many times you get frustrated because you can't sell to some of these people, and you know, how do you make any money? And remember, you used to tell me you got to stay the course. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then you, you look at the guys on the air there, Jim Cox, John Allen, Tim Watts, Mike Murphy and I, we had our, our times, um, Dan Mason, um, man, you just walk through all of that. Then you get here and you think about the Julie Franzics and you think about the Amys and the Janes and Mark, you know, God love him, and Tim Akteroff. Talk about full circle, you know, the guy that's uh, busting the screen door, uh, come to work here at RC Productions many, many years later. In fact, I think he's 24 years. Mm -hmm. And the way he fixed my flag out front from the wind blowing it out is he just JB welded it right in the holder. <laughs> he never thought you had to stand on a chair to change the flag. <laughs> but um, So I've been blessed with clients, uh, relationships, um, you know, I'm kind of a type A perfectionist person, but 
I'm as loyal as the day is long. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, I wouldn't be anywhere without all of these, these people. And, you know, my father taught us how to work hard. My mm -hmm. brother and I, uh, he's been successful in his business. Uh, my mother, you know, uh, she got to see a lot of this. I lost her in 99. Tim put me through Dale Carnegie classes. Remember those? You and I. Roy. Roy Winninger, right? Yeah, Roy. Yeah. <laughs> Your award was winning an ink pen, Roger. But it was fun. You'd get up, talk in front of people, and a lot of those people become clients. Yeah. It's all, you know, in the sales manager training, the CRMC. You know, I was the first one in this market to be a certified radio marketing consultant. I think I was number 904 in the United States. All right. And so you were a pioneer member of that. You know, it's hard to put your finger on just a few people because there's just there's so many, and I'm learning each and every day. Yeah. It's just it's just been a I've been very blessed and it's been a good ride. Yeah. My mom was fascinated when we had the car shows and the air shows and mm. you know you'd be up on a stage with all these people and she was just she just could not believe that you could just step up there and. And do that. It all. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. So. The uh, quick story, funny story. Uh, it wasn't funny at the moment. At MUS, the fake money story. Oh, you've got a. You actually oh. got an example. Oh. Yeah. Um, this one. I'm surprised I didn't lose my job over this one. But we had, you know, we had some competitors out there at the time. I think that's when Sunny FM, Bob Goodrich had put 104.5 on in Muskegon, and they had the Money Man, and they had all this. Uh, smoke and mirror stuff going and uh, you know MUS was it was a dominant station but yet you know there was a lot of a lot of play going on with the ratings and misinformation with clients that they were better than MUS and this that and everything else so I had the idea that we would we were always going to chamber events and after hours events Tim would what I thought we had to have three of us that pretty much everything all the time. Mm -hmm. So I come up with the idea, I put a hundred dollar bill on this side and I put a dollar bill on this side. And when you would go to one of these after hour events full of all of the who's who's in Muskegon, you'd just nonchalantly set this up by the bar <laughs> or you'd set it on the floor and people would walk around and we used to just break out laughing and they would see this, well somebody would look at it, they'd look around They'd look at it again, they'd look around, they'd pick it up, some would turn it over, do that, and the next thing you know, they open it, and it says it pays to take a closer look. <laughs> radio advertising is no exception, so all radio stations are not the same. Put your advertising dollar to work for WMUS 107 FM and you'll see the difference. Add up the benefits, all the benefits, okay? Um, this was a great, I mean, this was a great, you know, mm -hmm. piece up until a uh, front desk girl come in the back in the trailer we got from Deer Park Funland that we added to the side of the building on Giles Road. Mm -hmm. uh, she said there's two guys up front very nicely dressed with federal badges. <laughs> and they want to know who come up with this. <laughs> I said, is Tim here? <laughs> she said, no. So I walked up front and there stood these two very serious gentlemen and I said, hi, my name is Randy Crow." and uh, the girl handed this back to the federal agent. He said, uh, is this your doing? I said, yes sir. He said, uh, we have a problem with this. This is uh, something about currency and um, you know this is just not uh, not kosher. And he said who printed it? And I said well sir I'll take full responsibility for this because this was my doing. I wasn't going to give up our printer because it was my idea. <laughs> and so he said, how many of these did you print? 
I thought for a second, do I tell him how many or do I just tell him not many? <laughs> I said 5,000. He said, 5,000? I said, yes, sir. How many do you think you have now? You remember, we blanketed the market with these. Mm -hmm. We mailed them. Mm -hmm. We, I mean, mm -hmm. they were everywhere. We told everybody, you go to a bar, you go to a movie, you go any place <laughs> you go, leave the money. Because they were the money man over at 104.5, and we're setting the facts straight, right? So I went and I got the boxes, the ones I had left, and he said, we are going to uh, do an investigation on this, and we will be in touch, and we will let you know what the repercussions of this is going to be. And, you know, who is the station manager, and, you know... We'll have to get with him because we'll need your FCC license and all this. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, mm. I am sunk. <laughs> and somehow when they talk to Tim, I don't know if he give them Deer Park tickets, you know, or uh, <laughs> sent them on a trip or <laughs> what, he, what he did. But this kind of just kind of nonchalantly disappeared. I'm not sure he ever told uh, the president and the owner, Bunker Rogoski and Mike Bonster, that this had rolled out. <laughs> uh, but needless to say, I don't really have this right now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, maybe we should edit that out. <laughs> no, that was that was a that was a classic. <laughs> Scary, but a classic. Oh yeah. But again, I owned it. I told them I did it. I told him how many. Didn't give up the printer because I just, I knew that the printer would be in a lot of trouble. Yeah. And it, he was just trying to fulfill, you know, MUS was a great client of that printer yeah. at the time. Yeah. And you said he was skeptical. He didn't want to do it to start with. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he told me he couldn't do it. And I said, come on. So, a yeah. little persuasion worked. Yeah. Wow. Any other stories that jump out? Uh, I, uh, let me ask you an odd question here. You, you came over to MUS to sell advertising. Did you approach Fred Tascone about that idea ever? No. You know, because I felt, I guess I just really never put two and two together because the true staff were all icons. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had... Bill Ecker, Ramona Ganey, mm -hmm. Fred Tascone, mm -hmm. uh, trying to think of uh, uh, Sandy, uh, Fred's wife was uh, key in that operation. Mm -hmm. They had some real long term, but they were the giant. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. They were. The Big 16 was Huge. the giant. Yeah. And um, so, you know, and then over the years I had a chance to go to TV 13. And uh, remember Tim telling me everything that glitters is a gold. And uh, I'm glad I didn't take that job because uh, actually Dave Weehy took that job and they come in and cut the account list into small little sections so you'd have never made the money that was promised there. Mm -hmm. uh, and Dave Weehy replaced me when uh, I, uh, I left uh, MUS. So... Yeah, interesting. Interesting journey, isn't it? Oh, amazing, Randy. You've had an amazing career. The, uh, which leads to our last question, I guess. How would you want people to describe you and your career? Randy Crow is very loyal, very dedicated, um, cares about people, but he has high expectations. And... Um, you know, I think uh, at the end of the day, all we leave here with is our integrity. And, you know, because of my deep voice, some, some people may say that I'm a little, uh, I think my temperament's a lot better than it used to be because when you're type A and a perfectionist is pretty challenging. Um, but I think that, that dedicated, loyal, I'd be very proud of that. Very cool. So, uh, thank you, Randy.
Well, thank you. This has been great. Uh, this is another edition of Legends of Muskegon Radio, featuring this interview of Randy Crow. Thank you. Muskegon weather mostly cloudy today with scattered showers and thunder showers through tonight. High today 75, low tonight around 60 and cloudy tomorrow with more showers, high 82. Right now under cloudy skies, 68 degrees with Randy Collins in Chicago on True. Say charge it. True Sports reports the Tigers over Seattle by the score of 9-2. The White Sox by the Red Sox by the score of 4-1. And the Cubs over San Diego by the score of 9-6. Lottery winner was 0-4-6. It's Golden Grassroots from True. This reminder, a car wash for muscular dystrophy will be held at the 7-Eleven on Norton and McCracken today, August 18th from 10 to 4. The car wash is just a buck, so go on out and get your car washed. Here's Tommy James and Dragon the Line. WTRU's coming attractions for next hour of the main event. Fight song theme with Ricky Lee Jones, Maxine Nightingale, Leave Me On, John Stewart, and more of your favorites. Lynn Marshall's next at 12 noon. Port City weather this afternoon and tonight mostly cloudy with scattered showers and thunder showers. High this afternoon 75, low tonight around 60. Cloudy with scattered showers and thunder showers tomorrow. High around 82. Right now it's cloudy and 69 degrees. The truth. WTRU. Good morning, 11 minutes after 6 o'clock. With Randy Collins in the Port City where it's going to be warm and humid with scattered showers and thunder showers. Throughout the day and tonight and along with Monday, high today getting up around 75 and low tonight around 65. Here's the Seeger. Right now it's mostly clear and 58 degrees with Randy Collins on Muskegon's full service station, WTRU. WTRU, Randy Collins, and this reminder for Michigan Eye Bank pledge cards. Contact your local Lions Club or write to Michigan Eye Bank, University of Michigan, Ann Arbor, 48109, 628. Love grows where my rosemary goes. 6.30 Sunday morning with Randy Collins where True presents Guest Movie Night. WTRU, six minutes away from 7 o'clock. Randy Collins and the 1970 teenage idol, Bobby Sherman. WTRU's next hour's musical outlook, do or die. Ricky Lee Jones and Chucky's in love, the Charlie's Daniels Band. Earth, Wind, and Fire, Ann Murray. More of your favorite music, Dave Benson at 7 o'clock with True News. And back to True M.U.S. The Music Station, 816, Friday night with Randy Collins and Eddie Rabbit, and pour me another tequila.